Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. Bill McMahon along with Steve Sargent from the High Wall, the Church of God in Christ. Yes. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate Steve being Thank here. Thank you. So glad to be back. Yeah. Actually, well. Steve's church is going to be helping us in a one on the north, we hope. Yes, so sir. they're going to come, come check it out. They came for training. So mm-hmm. we do appreciate that. That's pretty awesome. Yes. And one one of the topics, you know, we you can, there's a ton of topics to talk about, but mm-hmm. I'm a big NFL fan. Uh, Eagles, because I came from Eastern Pennsylvania, so the Eagles are my team. I know Steelers will make that admission, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Steelers are your team. Mm-hmm. Browns are my second team in the AFC. But one of the issues that I'm having this year is the Deshaun Watson <clears throat> move. And I'm trying to read it to be fair. I've tried to educate myself a little bit on it because you have a vague idea at first when it came out, you know, I read and I was happy to hear, well, you know, if you had, you know, every charge and by the way, I'm not positive about this. So don't take anything of what I'm saying. Understand. Like, I I think it's reprehensible. It's terrible. What he did. I'm not watching the Browns. So I'll just stay. That's where I'm headed. But when I, when I came up, first came to start investigating, I was glad that he said, well, he's not going to ask them to hush. He's not going to, you know, he wants them to be able to talk and to tell their story. I thought that was all good. Mm-hmm. I thought that, uh, you know, it was definitely a lot of allegations, but they said if every, if he was convicted of every one, it would have been misdemeanors anyway. So then as we come closer to the season, I got out, I started researching more because more things have come out. You know, the women, have, there's been more articles written, whether it's New York Post or Sports Illustrated or people are starting to interview the victims, right? Yes. The people who have made the claims. And reading about what that guy did to some of these women is highly inappropriate. It's just treating them like objects, treating them like they're there to serve you and everything that we're trying to get away from as a country, because we should be treating women with respect. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so I guess my theory is, and we're going to talk about the details of it, Steve, is this, I have a nice Brown shirt. I feel like if I wear it since Deshaun Watson is not a second string offensive lineman. Okay. <laughs> he is the, in fact, the face of the Cleveland Browns at this point, even with an 11 game suspension, like you said, he's still the face of yes. the Cleveland Browns. If I wear that shirt that I'm saying, I am okay with what he did. If I watch the Browns, I'm saying I'm okay with what he did and I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. If he were repent, I think I would think of it differently, but that's not the way it seems. Mm. Yeah. That's a very, good way of looking at it. Um, of course, you know, I'm not a Browns friend. Let, right. me, uh, let me preface my little statements by saying that I do um, support the Browns. I would like to, for them to do good. I never want them to do as good as or better than the Steelers. Right. Of course. We're in the same division, but there's been two occasions in my life when the Browns made the playoffs and the Steelers didn't, I rooted for the Browns. Right. Okay. I don't hate the Browns because of Deshaun. I really have a question and despise the front office. Right. For because obviously the team didn't vote to have him there. Like let's like they right. didn't vote for anybody else or make that decision. The front office, the owner, the general managers, those people who worked out this crazy deal because that's what it is. Right. The amount of money that he's paying, the amount that's guaranteed with this cloud of controversy that's over his head. To me, it's the last thing the Cleveland Browns needed. No, I I do. I would agree with that 100%. I don't understand why you would bring somebody to the Browns organization that has now up to 30 allegations against him from other women. And again, reading some of their testimony, the stuff that he did was unbelievable. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like if, if I treated a woman, if I did anything even close to what that guy did, I would be fired instantly. Yeah. What happens in this country where we're at today, this man, after what he did to all those women is rewarded with the most guaranteed money of Mm -hmm. any quarterback in NFL history. Mm -hmm. He has more money guaranteed to that. And I'm thinking to myself, have we lost our ever loving mind? (laughs) To, to give someone and guarantee them more money than anyone else, to treat them like they're royalty after they've been disrespecting, at best, disrespecting. I would say they've been, he's been dishonoring women. He was taking advantage. He was exploiting. He mm-hmm. was, it was, it's not good mm-hmm. what he did. And now we gave him more money than anyone traded away three first round draft picks, some fourth rounders. Mm-hmm. It, 
$230 million guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. No matter what happens, he's guaranteed, right? That's what guaranteed money That's means, right? right? Uh, yeah. He's guaranteed yeah. $230 million. Even, was it, uh, I think, man, what's, what's the guy's name? Uh, Kyler Murray down in yeah. uh, Arizona? In Arizona, yeah. Arizona again. He's a short guy. Yeah, he got, his guaranteed money was close to half of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's like, but anyway, uh, just reading what some of the facts are. This comes from Sports Illustrated. Uh, the title, Deshaun Watson and the Browns look worse than ever. After the NFL and his players settled Thursday on 11-game suspension, a $5 million fine plus counseling, Watson walked back his phony half-apology before last week's preseason game saying, I'm going to continue to stand on my innocence. Mm. And that he apologized because a lot of people – are that triggered? I have to do what's best for Deshaun, Deshaun Watson at the end of the day. And here's what they say. Like empathy is a character flaw. The Browns are suckers if they believe in him and frauds if they don't, which is mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. You're a fraud mm -hmm. if you believe in the guy. Mm -hmm. You're a sucker if you do. This guy, I'm going to continue to stand on my innocence. I have a major problem with that. Yes, I do too. And again, the guilt comes back to the front office right the front office i have no idea i mean they've made press conferences and given statements and they say they want to give him a chance and all that and they knew all of this this right. is not like something they found out after he no, signed they, a contract. they they went into it knowing they, yes and they knew that but my thing is number one and i'm not like i said a browns fan but the browns have a good team right. talent wise right. they have one of the best offensive lines in the nfl they have the to me the best running game in the NFL. Right. They had some of the best receivers in the NFL. You don't have to have, let's say the the best quarterback in the NFL for your offense because you've got right. all those tools that are solid in place. Right. You could take a, just a better than average quarterback and still be very very good. Right. Why would you do this? Why would you go after a person? And he didn't play last year. He will not play most right. of this year. Right. What will he be like on the field and all of this in his head and the people are calling him names, you know, in the audience. And I know you get called names in the NFL, but now this it's one thing to call somebody a name because you hate their team. Well, this is ha really has nothing to do with football. Even. Right. Well, do Why you, people hate him or do you, hate the do fact you that think he's there. that we as Christians should, should I, I'm sure you would agree with the statement should be concerned with what we're associating ourselves with. And what that's going to look like? Oh, absolutely. We we should because we um we represent Christ. Right. We're you know we we're, we're Christ's ambassadors. Right. We like if you are the ambassador to Canada, everything that you do in while you're ambassador to Canada, you represent the United States. Right. It, I don't care where you are. You could be in the in the store. You could be in an official meeting as ambassador or just out fishing or something. You still represent the United States. Right. You're one of the ambassadors. And we have a similar obligation, even a more calling, a higher calling in Christ. Right. And we are all one in Christ. We're united in Christ. You think about the way God wants us to treat others the way we, we want to be treated, to love, to respect. Yes. Women should be respected. And we as men especially should echo that mm -hmm. we as men should say and live by that principle. Yes. I will respect women. I'm, I'm against pornography. I'm against the exploitation of women, any of that stuff. Like I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want anything to do with anyone saying that I would take a stand pro man, no matter what he does to women as if they're lesser objects right. you understand we're supposed to yeah. treat women according to first peter chapter three husbands treat your wives as the weaker vessel and that doesn't mean weak it, it, as much as it means cherished mm -hmm. like i should treat them as somebody that i cherish and treat them as special he was just treating these people like they were prostitutes right. bottom line bottom line yeah. he was treating them like they were there for him to serve him and i think it's disgusting mm -hmm. yeah he he may have been better off if he just had prostitutes do whatever right. and handle it that way instead of going into a people's profession that isn't prostitution right. and turn it, trying to turn it into, uh, let's say, prostitution. Right. It's it. Like I said, I've read some of the accounts of what he did 
totally against it. So here's where I stand right now. I stand with that's wrong. Why this guy gets to be a starting NFL quarterback and still be a star and you haven't been repentant. You haven't been, nothing happens to you. I just think it's the wrong message Mm -hmm. for our society. I, I believe that it's the wrong message. You clearly are saying as the Browns that winning is more important than how we treat women. Clearly. Therefore, I'm not watching. I'm not I'm not gonna watch the Browns. Like I'll go out hiking. I told my wife, I said, look, well, I'm just gonna win know this Sunday after church in the fall. I'm just gonna go take walks with you and whoever the kids or friends want to go, and we'll go do other things. I'm not gonna be sitting around watching football because I'm just not for this. Because I just fear, Bill, if you do, you are saying you're okay with it. And I can't, I cannot afford as a Christian and and somebody in my position as a community leader, I can't afford to say, well, yeah, you know, I know he did all those things, but I like football. Well, are you not going to watch football at all? Or are you not going to watch? No, I would watch the Eagles. Oh, I see. You're not going to. Yeah. But, uh, but the problem is with me, Steve, is I don't have, it costs me money to get the channels. Mm -hmm. So right now I have Netflix and things like that, that I, as far as I know, that I might be able to watch like Thursday night football on primetime, like. Mm, yeah. uh, with uh, Amazon Sunday Prime, I maybe, but to me, it would cost 60, 70 bucks a month to get that streaming service. I don't really plan on hanging around my house on Sunday right. at that point. It. What would really be the point of it? So it's not that I wouldn't watch the Eagles if they were on. What I'm saying is at this point, because of what the Browns did, I just don't want to sure. pay. I get it for that. And and one thing I feel badly about to be honest, like it's not Miles Garrett's fault. It's not Amari Cooper's fault. It's not other play, you know Kareem Hunt's fault mm-hmm. or Ch- Nick Chubb's fault. Like I do kind of feel badly about that because I realize hey, there are a lot of decent humans on that team. But this guy again is not just another player. He's not just your again your second string tight end or your tight end. This guy is the absolute face of the Browns, mm-hmm. and and I think from that reason I have a problem. So they said uh, in the article, Browns owners Jimmy and D Haslam acted like not commenting on Watson's conduct as some kind of principled position. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we have character, we're not commenting on his <laughs> his character. They, they, they were talking about how he's getting counseling as a process. Yeah, sure. But why did these processes have to start with? In other words, what's a process as counseling? They go, why does the process have to start with a record-breaking, fully guaranteed $230 million <laughs> contract? Why did Jimmy Haslam say last week that Watson is remorseful when Watson made it very clear Thursday that he isn't? because he's going to stand on his innocence. Mm -hmm. So he goes, one hand, the owner's like, he's remorseful. He's out there. That is not what he said. Now, I'm all for forgiveness and second chances. Am I for second chances? Absolutely. We all need that. But I'm also for track record. I'm also for proving it. Mm -hmm. I I accept that people change. I accept that I'm not going to free someone at the worst moment of their life. Look at Mike Vick. Mm -hmm. Mike Vick was out there doing stuff with dogs and dog fighting and he got arrested and he went to jail for that. Right. Yeah. And he was out of the NFL. When he came back, a lot of people were really hard on him that he went to the Philadelphia Eagles where I kind of felt like the dude did his time. Yeah. Like, yeah, he did bad stuff. He admitted he did bad stuff. He went to jail and paid for bad stuff. That to me, you can forgive that. Mm-hmm. I, you, it's, it's very hard to forgive non-repentance not that he did anything to me but you know what i'm saying is it's very hard to let it go when there's not been repentance and i think this is true of marriage or anything else it's if you really want someone to forgive you repent change show some remorse recognize that it was wrong what you did because if this man's not willing to recognize that it's wrong what's going to stop him from continuing to do this Mm -hmm. this is a pattern dude this guy had in i forget it was 15 months what it was exactly had 66 massage therapists at his house 66 this guy's got money you know what it seems like to me if you've got money and you can hire the lawyers you can get away with something that's the way how it comes across to me if you're a star no grand jury is going to convict you mm. because you're popular this is how it comes across to me i, I think it's the absolute wrong message yeah, it is a wrong message and unfortunately the cleveland browns had options and they chose to go this route right they had 
options. He right. wasn't the only person they could have chosen. Right. I don't think that um, uh, Baker Mayfield was bad. You know, he had an injury last year that he played through most right. of the season. I kind of thought he fit with the team. And no, he they made with, it seem and, like and, he did. And he also fit with Cleveland. Right. And the ne- <laughs> next thing you know, but you, you're putting <laughs> – you're you're putting winning above women. Yeah. I think it's a huge bad optic. I think this is going to be. I think this is going to be a disaster. That's what I predict. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an absolute disaster. They're going to lose a ton of money. This guy is not even going to play. Mm-hmm. They're going to lose fans. That's what's going to happen because there there are some actual principled people in the world mm-hmm. who say, "No, I'm not going to take the step with you." I'm not going to support you because of what this man did to women. Because again, it seems to implicate and make us part of the problem because we're not willing to take a stand to say, no, women need to be treated in a proper way, in a way that honors Christ. Right. I agree. I don't know if the Browns will ever recover, uh, at least from the uh, reputation part of this. Right. And it's not, unfortunately, like you said, there's good players on the team. There's a lot of good people. Right. They can't control what the front office does those decisions they make right they, they'll he, probably be paying for this for a long time he said in march i don't have any regrets then after robinson cited his lack of express remorse as a contributing factor in suspending him for six games ended up becoming 11 games roger goodell said the commissioner of the nfl said the guy was predatory hmm. now you don't just come out publicly and say someone's predatory if, if the evidence is weak, do mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You come out and say the guy's predatory. If you really believe he's predatory, Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL feels like he is predatory. Now there's nothing you can do about it. If your grand juries won't convict, if your grand juries, if your prosecutors won't come and put appropriate charges against it, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Then, yeah, I mean, I understand there's nothing you can do. He says, you know, people deserve second chances. And, you know, uh, one guy says, you know, people shouldn't be defined by the mistakes they made. But Watson says he didn't make any mistakes. Again, this is my problem with it. I would agree 100%. Yeah, people shouldn't be defined by mistakes. People should have a second chance if you're willing to admit you're wrong. When you're not willing to admit you're wrong, then we have a big disagreement here. (laughs) Again, uh, Steve, come on. If you did this to women, if if a woman came over to give you a back massage and you start pulling her scrubs down... Mm. While she's while she's there and not even asking, you just pull her right. clothes off. That's like almost like rape, I guess. Or you don't think that'd be a problem in the community? It'd be a problem for me. It'd be a problem for you, dude. You you be done <laughs> in any position. So would I. Mm-hmm. I would be absolutely done in my position. But when you're an NFL again, a star or a movie star or a politician, it just seems like there's a different standard for how they operate and what they can get away with compared yeah. to us. Yeah, I agree right? with you on that. And that's that's the un- unfortunate part of our society. Oh, yeah. My I, wife complains about it all the time. I said, honey, ever since the Clintons, mm-hmm. there's been no. Clintons, hey, hold on. All, we can go back farther than that. Oh, further than that. But I'm thinking that was a, some big ones there. I think b- 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 I, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity offender. I think they're all corrupt. So I just feel like there's corruption on both sides of the fence. And But I know this full well. It won't matter. Because there's not going to be justice yeah. when it comes to these people. Yeah, they have. Which is uh, unfortunate because guess what? All it does is get us more misbehavior. Right. And other we, people will go pay their price. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Richard Nixon, other folks right. went to jail for him in, right. in reality. Right. That's just the way it is. Right. You're going to take the fall. If you're going to fall on the sword. But no, no society, nothing in society is going to change if we keep okaying bad behavior. The Browns treated Watson like a monarch. They could have made a public apology as a condition of a signing, even if it was a vague one. Watson used his introductory press conference to say he did nothing wrong, had no regrets, and the Browns verbally supported that contention. Five months have passed. The Browns look worse than ever. They have forfeited a right to take moral stands down the road. They have signaled to their roster that misconduct will be conducted, may be ignored completely. They are building their team around a player who says we shouldn't judge his innocence just because settlements and things like that happen. Thoughts? Yeah, I um, I feel sorry for the other people around who right. who've been trying to do you know lift lift up the standard of who they are in professional life. 
and um, you know guard their conduct when they're not playing football. Right. It tarnishes their name. That's Absolutely. all. Because I mean, the whole, because you're going to say like we've right. said, the Browns. Right. And we mentioned him, but we still are saying the Browns. Right. And 99 percent of them had nothing to do with right. whatever's going on. Right. Especially those on the field, but. That's right. how it's going to be judged and how it's going to be. Listened. As a Christian man, I just, again, I feel like I have to make a stand on what's right. If you have an unapologetic person who has violated women the way that he did, mm. I just can't support that. I can't have anything to do with it. I want to be, honestly, I want to be a hundred miles away from it. I don't even want to be close to it or have anything to do that I would, any comments that I would make on social media, anything that I would do, and, and making any kind of comments. And if you're watching the Browns, I don't know how much I'd be talking about it, to be honest, because there are going to be some people that are just offended that you don't take it seriously. Mm-hmm. And I think that we live in a day when we have to take morality seriously. I think we have to take truth seriously. We need to take the Bible seriously. Yeah. You can't have moral high ground and say, hey, guys, you know, come to follow Jesus and how you live is important. But not if you're not if, you know, we like football. Then all of a sudden, you know, if this guy's the face, and again, he's the face of it. It's different mm-hmm. than just a player. He's the face of the organization. He's the captain of the team. He's almost on when it comes to that field, your CEO. Right. Yeah, he's the quarterback, and he's right. He's a quarterback. Is is the is an absolute prime leadership position. Mm-hmm. As leadership goes, so go the rest of the team. I'm not saying the rest of the team is going to do that. I'm just saying it's just not good. It's yeah. not a good look. They shouldn't have done it. I'm I'm offended that they did it, and yeah, I just can't support it. So that's yeah. why you do what you want. Do I care? I talk to people that are going to walk around. I don't care what you do. You do what you want. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to do what I want. I'm hiking. So that's now, what I'm if doing. you are a Browns fan, and you feel as disgusted as. Pastor Bill has mentioned, you're more than welcome to come and join Steeler Nation. <laughs> you're more than welcome to come. Where we try, we we strive right. to. Uh, uh, we have a longstanding tradition of winning, right? And uh, you know we're not perfect. They've we've had some people make some mistakes, and but they didn't go unchecked, right? They were they were dealt with, right? I think appropriately, at right. least in my lifetime, right? Because we want to put a product out there that fans can cheer for and be proud right. of. So you, we have open arms to you yeah. if you want to come and join up with us. That's right. I'm a Pennsylvania. <laughs> Before I was Ohio, and I probably lived about equal time in both states, actually. But I just, yeah, I look at it. I'm just, I just don't need it. I think there's other things to do with my life. You yeah. know, I think I just don't need to follow it. I don't need to be a part of it. I don't need. And again, a lot of stuff goes on that we don't know. We're dealing with stuff that we do know. Okay, you can argue all bill in every organization, blah, 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 stuff's going on. Okay, but I don't know about it. Don't know about it. This case, we do know about it. When you know about it, then I think that it behooves you to make a response to knowledge Mm -hmm. and not act like you don't know about it. At this point, none of us can act like we don't know about it. Like We know about it. We know what's happened. So I say we take a stand as Christians. But you have a great week and an awesome week, Steve. Thanks for coming on. I'll talk talk in the next podcast, talk about Proverbs chapter 3 and some great promises. That's an awesome Mm -hmm. one too. Anyway, have a blessed week. Yes.